In this clip we're going to talk about cascading. It's cascading of timers together, cascading of counters together, and cascading a timer and counter together. And we'll finish off the clip with reversible timers. I've got an example here of a couple of timers cascaded together and the purpose of cascading timers together is to get more than the maximum number you can enter into the preset. Now this is less likely to happen with a 32-bit PLC like the Logix 5000 or the Compact Logix but it is certainly uh, something you might need to consider. For example, uh, we've got a huge number here, 2 billion 147,483,647. Now that's the maximum positive number you can put into that double integer value and that applies right across the uh, PLC, the 32-bit PLC. That equates out to 596 hours or 24 days, 24.8 days actually. So that's a pretty long time to be putting them together and it may be that you do use other tools, more advanced tools that are not in the scope of this lesson uh, to do this thing rather than cascading together. But certainly if you're working with other PLCs, cascading is a commonly used and useful tool for extending beyond a 16-bit integer value which is 32,767. So, uh, by the way, uh, in case you're thinking, these are milliseconds and uh, I'm going to change that value now to something we can experiment with. So I'll just go, to, I've got the tag monitor open here, I'll go and change it to say 2000 which is a more realistic number so both of those are set now to two seconds. So before I start the circuit I'll explain to you how it works. Once I turn it on the first timer starts timing after two seconds its done bit comes on and the second or cascaded timer starts timing and its done bit will then come on and put on the output after that. So if you just watch the area over here, because it's going to happen fairly quickly, you've got four seconds, so I'll just toggle this on and away we go. So the first timer's timing, its done bit comes on, second timer, bang, she's done. So that's uh, two timers cascaded. Here we have a couple of counters cascaded together. The same principle applies, slightly different circuit operation, I'll explain that to you in a minute. Here we've got our big number once again, uh, just reinforcing that that is the maximum positive number you can put into a double integer field anywhere in the 32-bit PLC like the Compact Logix. Um, again, that's a lot of counts, so it may be that you don't need to use so many, so many cascaded counters, but it's certainly a valuable instruction. Uh, we'll just change that value now, we'll do it down here, uh, we'll put it to 5 I think, 5 is a f sort of a reasonable number for an experiment and we'll just double click that one in case you want to change it. Now you notice that I'm doing this while we're online so that's a handy little thing to be able to do, change the values of your, of your counters and timers on your online. Now the difference between the previous circuit and this one is that we also need to have a count pulse as well as, as, well as our on. So I'll turn it on first of all and then explain how it works. So the count pulse will toggle from false to true and count up one each time. So because we've set this one to five just for this uh, little experiment uh, it will count to five and then turn its done bit on and then the, the clock the count pulse will clock through onto this second counter and eventually after ten counts uh, we'll get a count up there bit <coughs> So here we go, let's give it a try. So I'll just toggle it from false to true a few times. You'll notice the first counter counting up and it's done bit well it has come on now after five counts and the second one will go after another five counts. So we've got actually five plus five. Now you'll notice the accumulator of this one is nine, so it's actually only seen nine counts. So sometimes you need to adjust your circuit to take into account when you're using these together and it may be appropriate to use a one-shot instruction to protect that count pulse counting both counters one together. So I'll leave you experiment with that and ask your instructor uh, if you've got some troubles but certainly investigate that uh, double count feature. 
Here we have a timer and counter together in a cascade arrangement. Uh, we've got a free running timer here, again with that huge number, just to reinforce there the fact that that is a pretty large number and uh, cascading may not be required. We'll give that a change now. We'll set it down to 2000, which is 2 seconds, and we'll count, put this to 5, say. Okay, so we've got a free running timer here that each 2 seconds will reset itself, and in the process it will count the counter one count and after the counter comes uh, to its preset it will its done bit will go on and out, put the output on uh, as with the previous circuit I haven't shown the reset for the counters in here not necessary to show them although naturally they're required so we'll toggle this uh, on and you'll notice the timer timing counting the counter so it's a handy little circuit to use and nice and easy to understand and after five she's away and you'll notice it stays on of course because we need to reset that and that's uh, timer and counter together cascaded here we have a reversible counter circuit showing the count up instruction the count down instruction and the output of the two combined counters and just to run through it the count up behaves as a normal count if you used a few of those before the count down which is new to you same address that's important and that's toggled by another bit so we've got a cars in bit for the say the incoming cars in the car park example the outgoing cars and they will adjust the uh, level of the timers according to what happens so if the car's out it'll count down the car's in it'll count up and eventually if we reach our preset then the car park full light will come on and here's the reset for it down there so I'll, first of all I'll just change this value to something a little bit more realistic such as five and uh, you'll see they both change because they're the same address and here we'll toggle the cars in bit and you'll notice that it's counting and you'll see that there it's going up the accumulator in both counters is going to whatever the value is at the moment which is three and we'll toggle it the cars out and down she counts so pretty straightforward easy to use and a nice tool for something like this car park example so let's fill the car park up now and see what happens our output light has come on already so we must have got there before when I wasn't looking. So we can reset it here. Just toggle this off. And we'll reset this here. And we'll just run through it once more to make sure we've got it under control. So new morning. Reset off. Cars in counter off. And cars in counter on. Cars in off and on and on and we'll, we'll take one out so we'll take a car out okay here we have a reversible counter circuit pretty straightforward construction a count up instruction a count down instruction Okay, here we have the reversible counter setup, a uh, count up instruction, a count down instruction, a output and a reset button. Pretty simple to put together. We've got a cars in input, a cars out input and of course the car park full lamp. And what happens here is the cars in input is toggled from false to true, the cars counter counts up when the cars out toggles from false to true the cars down the count down toggles the car down now I've got 200 in there a bit unrealistic for experiment I'll change it to five and you'll notice that the five changed in both counters because they are the same address so we've used the same address for each counter that's important to remember 
So I'll just toggle this a couple of times and you'll see it go up and that's cars coming in and I'll toggle the cars out a couple of times and you'll see it go down. Okay so even so we'll just take it now up again oops wrong one we'll just take you off there we'll take it up again to say four and count it down again so a car's gone out to three and now let's say that the car park does get full and you'll notice that when I toggle it once more the output will come on the car park full alarm is there and there it is so we can reset that if there's something wrong with the instruction the operator had to have a key override or something like that if there was something wrong okay but that's a nice little handy instruction for counting cars using the reversible counter so that's it then cascading and reversible counters all done